Coming up today on the Michigan Football Report, we've got rumors of a season-ending injury to a star defender. We'll talk about that coming up on the show. Also, Jim Arbaugh has been a little too mum and too coy on the quarterback and who's going to start Saturday against Penn State. I think I've got the answer. We'll talk about that. And lastly, who is calling the plays in offense for Michigan? Is Josh Gass still the offensive coordinator? Is he just that entitled? Did someone yank the play calling duties away from him in the second half on Saturday against Rutgers? And who will be calling plays going forward? It is the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports coming up right now. What's up, MFers? It is your host, James Yoder, here in the Michigan Football Report. If you haven't watched the show before, don't be offended. Relax, MFers. I'm not calling you a mother effer, okay? Michigan Football Report, MFR. If you watch the show, if you subscribe, if you enjoy what you see, you are an MFer. That's the nickname for the audience. So if you want to go down, type I'm an MFer, go ahead and down in the uh, comments, type that you're an MFer. Hey, let me know how long you've been watching the show, too. But those of you who haven't watched the show a lot or have and haven't subscribed, I'm thankful for everybody, all the MFers, and just hoping you guys could subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We have really grown this football season. We're week, you know, five, six weeks in. Uh, 10,454 subscribers on the channel. It's doubled in the last four months, and just trying to get to 10,500. Need 46 more of you guys to subscribe before Thanksgiving, so I can be thankful even more than I am for you guys for watching the show every day. Thank you for doing it. Let's get into today's show. It's the Michigan Football Rumors Roundup. And I know you guys have watched before. Most of you, you understand what we're talking about with these Harbaugh heads. But we'll, uh, we'll get into it in a second. So, Cam McGrone is a season-ending knee injury. I normally go to my Harbaugh heads, let you know the probability. But because it's a sensitive injury issue, I'm going to skip to the Harbaugh heads explainer. If you haven't seen this before, we take rumors out there, whether they're on message boards, Twitter, wherever, articles, and I reach out to my sources, I try to find out for you the validity of them, okay? We're not sourcing rumors, but if you see we us give zero Harbaugh heads, that means there's no truth to it. Fake news! One Harbaugh head, small shred of truth. Uh, there's something there, but not much. Two Harbaugh heads means it's a true rumor. People are talking. Could go either way. Three Harbaugh heads means it's pretty likely. The three wise men, my sources, haven't confirmed all across the board, but, uh, but, but we're getting there. If I get four Harbaugh heads, that means I have it, a certifiable F-A-C-K. That's a fact. That's how Jim Harbaugh spells it. That is how we spell it here at the Michigan Football Report. So, with that being said, I'm going to give, and I don't want to hear any of you guys, but Yoder said if he comes back and this turns out not to be true. But I have heard it enough from enough people, and I've confirmed it with one strong source, but not, not all my sources yet, that Cam McGrone tore his ACL. Okay, so give it a three Harbaugh heads. It's a bummer because he had a great season last year, okay? And it's a bummer because he has an NFL future ahead of him. Now, he did say in the spring and the summer that he was going to be back for 2021 no matter what. He's a redshirt sophomore, uh, kind of started the last eight, eight or so games of last year. And I think a lot of people thought he would be the next Devin Bush. So this knee injury, and by the way, speaking of Devin Bush, he had a torn ACL this season too. Hopefully he comes back stronger than ever. Hopefully, you know, he's probably not going to play in spring with an ACL injury, but he knows what we know. We know what he's bringing. He rehabs. He's back by September. He'll have a great season in 2021. Hopefully, still have the opportunity to go into the NFL. But remember, he is a redshirt sophomore this year because of the eligibility rules. He will be a redshirt sophomore next year as well. But this is what the defensive uh, depth chart for linebackers will look like without him. You might have seen that man on the field, Adam Shipley. Shipley over the last few weeks. He is a fourth-year walk-on, and I'm pretty in. You know, I'm pretty uh, torn on what. Shibley's role with this team, what it means for the program as a whole, and even in the last three games, Penn State, uh, Maryland, and Ohio State. But my sources say it's an ACL injury for Cam McGrone. Now, I've got a few different sources. Usually when I put a fact and FACK behind it, uh, I've got confirmation from multiple areas. But hoping it's not. Hoping it, you know, this is what? This is Wednesday, so we're four days after the game. Uh, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that they have, you know, diagnose this he's got an MRI or whatever and this is uh is not an unknown thing at this point and if it is unknown and it turns out not to be great that would be good news but if not I told you last year about Andrew Stuber and the in the uh and the injury he had weeks before anybody else hell I even told you the day he was getting surgery 
hours after it happened, the injury happened. So don't uh, don't come out with the Yoder pulling straws out of there. I'm telling you what I know, when I know it, and I'm not holding back because there's nobody holding the uh, uh, strings over, what do you call them, puppet strings over me, like the blog boys who just want to get access to watch Michigan football games for free and to go to Schembechler Hall and ogle over their, uh, their idols and the football team and the coaching staff. That's not my game. Three hard by heads for it. So don't expect Cam McGrone to be back this season. As far as what I know, sitting here, 4 o'clock Eastern on a Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. But this one I do know for a uh, for an FACK. Cam McNamara will be your starting quarterback on uh, Saturday against Penn State. High noon game uh, on ABC. And Jim Harbaugh's playing very coy about it. Ooh, ooh there. You know, we haven't made a decision. I'm not going to announce those things uh, too quick without looking at the film. And Josh Gass, oh, Joe played great, and Cade came in and gave us a spark, but we were going to see what happens in practice. Well, Vincent Gray kind of, uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, he let the cat out of the bag. Angelique Shingelis, longtime Detroit news writer, tweeted out yesterday. So, whatever, Ryan Zuki asked uh, Vincent Gray about the quarterback position. You see what it says there. Looks like Cade's going to be starting. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. But what I want to know is why we continue to have to deal with this BS from Jim Harbaugh where he just won't give it to you straight. We aren't blind. You're not blind. I'm not blind. We all know Cade McNamara gave this team a better chance to win. So why does Jim Harbaugh just not come out and say Monday, right, press conference when he, when he had all these conversations, did his podcast with John Jansen and did a little interview here and a press conference, just say, yeah, we made Cade the starter. He's proven it. In their game against Rutgers, he proved it the last few series against Wisconsin, and Joe hasn't proven it. He's had one good game and a couple other decent games and losing efforts, but Joe is not the guy right now. Cade's playing better. We're going to give Cade an opportunity. No one's going to get mad about that, not even Joe Milton. He knows that Cade's played better, so I don't understand why Jim Harbaugh has to be so coy. It does no service to you, does no service to me, and I don't think it does any service to the players to have to kind of walk on eggshells whether they're going to lie, but I think Cade McNamara has proven that he should have been the starter from the beginning. Had a really good game against Rutgers, throwing for 75% passing, 27 of 36. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. Also had a rushing touchdown, so five touchdowns in two and a half, less than two and a half quarters plus three overtimes. What a heck of a first game for him, right? He wasn't even starting, right? He has no starts in the season. And if you said, you know, what's the most impressive starting performance by a Michigan quarterback in history? Um, he wouldn't even be considered for that because he didn't get the start. But I put it up there, and the, probably the, more of the one, most un, unexpected performances by a Michigan quarterback that I can remember. You might go back to 2010 and, uh, and Denard Robinson. But take a look at the stats here. 2020, McNamara, no starts uh, to Joe Milton with five. 67% completion to 57% completion. But look at the stat, those last two, right? That is the most telling. With only about three quarters, three and a half quarters of play so far this season, Cade McNamara has more passing touchdowns than Joe Milton. He has zero interceptions to Milton's four. They both have a rushing touchdown. So five games for the majority, you know, four, three complete games, three quarters of another game, and a little about a half of another game. Joe Milton has only put up four passing touchdowns to four interceptions, one rushing touchdown. Cade McNamara came in, guys, and did it in two and a half quarters, right? So I don't know where the the question is out there for Jim Harbaugh. And you saw what he did in the locker room. If you follow me on Twitter, I put the video out right after the game. Cade McNamara giving a heck of a good you know pump-up speech. What happens if we win out, right? Hey, they told Jim Harbaugh as a team they're going to focus on the second half of the season. They're going to act like the first half didn't, didn't, uh, didn't happen, which I guess is good if you're Jim Harbaugh trying to get a contract extension. Just act like it didn't happen. But um, I don't see any problem with uh, announcing him as a starter coming into Monday. You've had you know a day and a half to, uh, to talk to the team, let everybody know. I don't know why Jim Harbaugh has to be so coy. But Michigan, Penn State coming up on Saturday, a little Thanksgiving weekend. First time in a long time Michigan hasn't played Ohio State on Thanksgiving for for years, it was the weekend before Thanksgiving. Then, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, they made it Thanksgiving weekend. Michigan's a two-point favorite against the 0-5 Nittany Lions. And that kind of tells you how far both teams are, is that uh, Penn State's a two-point underdog to Michigan, a 2-3 and three Michigan team with uh, uh, you know starting a backup quarterback, or that Michigan's only a two-point favorite at home against an 0-5 Penn State team. It's like, which is worse? <laughs> the only two-point favorite over the 0-5 team or 
this Michigan team is crap and Penn State's still an underdog uh, against them. But if you want to get going, if you think you know what the score is going to be, if you want to have a little more fun this holiday weekend, make sure you get going with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, still offering the 125% deposit bonus. Go to chatsports.com slash go blue. It's right at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash go blue. When you sign up and you deposit, type in go blue as your promo code. They'll add 125% deposit bonus. So you put in 100, you have an extra 125 bucks. You put in 200, an extra 250. Bet on some games, allows you to maybe lose a game or make a crazy wild bet. If you lose, you're no worse off. Make sure you get going with them. I've been betting for about, you know, the last four seasons. I had a, a bad run back when I was younger. Got back in about three, four years ago, and it makes every Saturday and Sunday just a little bit more enjoyable, especially if Michigan isn't doing what I hope they are doing on the field. If you guys, though, want to make a prediction, I'm going to roll out my $25 Venmo uh, guarantee. It's got to be on this video. Go down in the comments. I'll pin this comment below. Uh, predict the score. Michigan, Penn State. Got to tell me the score, final score. Pass me before kickoff. And you have got to tell me which team is going to win. I'm not going to assume you think me Michigan. I'm not going to assume me and Penn State. And no editing. If you edit, you're automatically disqualified. I blew the producer's ears out with that one, but a lot of you guys like to go in afterwards and edit, and, you know, it's pretty obvious. We know when you edit it. So go down. I'll make my prediction down there as well. Michigan, Penn State, noon on Saturday. Next rumor on the board, Jim Harbaugh, Ed Warner. Are they calling plays? I'm just going to put calling plays up there and, and talk, call it two Harbaugh heads. People are talking. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have saw Saturday night, Fourth quarter, you know, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, a 10-play drive, something like that, uh, to, to go up eight late in the game. I said, I've watched every snap Jim Harbaugh has called in a football game, every snap his teams have played for at least a decade, right? And I might have been over-exaggerating here or there, but I watched him all the time in San Francisco. I lived there when he was the coach. I watched him every snap in Michigan, and that was Jim Harbaugh's offense, right? That was not the offense Josh Gass has run here at Michigan for the past 18 games. So I believe that Jim Harbaugh said, I ain't losing the Rutgers and go dropping a one and four on the year. Josh, I'm going to take over here. And I kind of think, based on what I saw at the end, there was like a bro hug between Harbaugh and Gaddis, and then the same thing with Warner. And then Warner kind of put his arm around Gaddis like, hey, man, I got your back there. And I believe this happened last year, is that Josh Gaddis being a first-time play caller, Ed Warner being a seasoned play caller, being a, you know, he was the offensive coordinator at Ohio State, co-OC in the national title year, got the play calling duties in 2015, 2016. Uh, then Ryan Day took over for him in 2017. He was let go, uh, went to Minnesota, I think, for a year, and then Michigan the past three seasons. But that's pretty part of the course. The offense has been brutal for the last three weeks, and you're putting in a backup quarterback. And Jim Harbaugh wants to get a win. He knows he has much more football experience. He played in the NFL for 15 years. He was a starter at Michigan for three years. He's been an NFL head coach. He's been a college head coach at two major programs, Stanford and Michigan. He knows football a hell of a lot more than Josh Gass. And so I think there was a point in the game where Jim Harbaugh said, Josh, I'm calling the plays now. And it was pretty clear based on the stats that we showed you. The offense against, uh, against Rutgers, definitely in the second half, if you look at the stats, the, the, the comparables, was just much better. 219 yards last week against Wisconsin. And those yards weren't all come from behind yards like the Wisconsin were, game was. They weren't all come from behind yards like that 357 against Indiana. They weren't all like, gosh, we're going to lose this game. Let's let Milton throw the ball every time because we can't run against like it was against Michigan State. This is a balanced offense, and it was an offense that I think can maybe win a couple games. You beat Penn State, you're feeling okay, right? You're back to 3-3. Three and three. You beat Maryland, and you're, you're a winning team, right? You go to the Ohio State game. You assume that's a loss, but you could still end up with a six and four season should you win the crossover game, like the number four or five, uh, you know, East versus West, and you're probably playing a pretty crappy bowl game, but it's like the number seven team from the SEC. Six and four season from starting off one and three to ending in six and four, that's a good start. And I think that gives Jim Harbaugh the authority to sign a two or three year extension uh, and probably come back next year with a very radically. Uh, um, changed coaching staff, I think, from the coordinator position and several of the position coaches. But I want to know from you guys, thinking about the offensive coordinator, thinking about the offensive play calling, will Josh Gass be the OC in 2021? Next season, we'll be back for year three with Jim Harbaugh. I'm giving it a no. I don't think he will be because we're a year and a half into it, and it's always spurts. Last year it was six, seven games, and like, oh, wow, Penn State game, baby. Oh, yeah, second half, we still lost. This year it's like, oh, Finally, in the, the Rutgers game, you had some good offense. But 
We'll see if it lasts. We'll see if they put up points against Ohio State when it counts and not when you're down by 40 points. So I don't think it will be, but let me know why for yes. I'll be back next year and for no. Thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. You have made it this far. That means you like what you saw. I now nominate you. You're an MFer. So subscribe to the channel. Hit this button right here. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do today. And it's Thanksgiving, right? You've got nothing better to do the next couple of days. Spend some time watching more Michigan Football Report right here. And right here, go blue.